All I hear is talking, I don't sweat that. If they don't trust me, yeah, I respect that. If she need on the ride, do oh, I bet that? Ooh, I slide for my people, don't forget that. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. Ooh, I slide for my people, don't forget that. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. Ooh, I slide for my people, don't forget that. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is J.H. How y'all doing, post to family? Is everybody good? Is everybody cool? Everybody clean? Are you crisp? Are you feeling iry today? Ha <laughs> ha, let's talk. But first, let me see your tootsie roll. Tootsie roll. Somebody told me to write. Anyway, listen. Uh, I'm going to read some things because, get this, get this. YouTube says their algorithm is pushing more information out to people that actually have written scripts out more than the other people. So now I'm talking to text so that I can remember. Th- and it helps me a lot because I can't remember all this information. So just bear with me if I don't stare in the camera. All right. Sometimes my breath stinks, so I don't want to get in your house or in your phone. Because if you're watching like this and the breath and then just (laughs) smell it, smell it. Mm -hmm. Some people get my humor. Some people don't. Shut up, Jay. Just keep talking. Listen, Louis DeJoy, your homie and mine, made a statement a couple days ago in regards to privatizing the United States Postal Service captured your interest, but it's not what you think. It's not what you think. I'm going to read his little statement. Take it for what it's worth. And then I'm going to give you my opinion behind it. My opinion, which probably means nothing. Some people agree. Some people disagree. But that's what the platform's for. All right. But honestly, before we continue, if you haven't watched my video where I'm, I'm talking about... Uh, Christine and her battle with um, the that evil thing that's going on with the yeah the cancer. Um, please do watch it. I, I don't I don't ask you guys to do much, but this one please do watch it. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's personal for me. Louis DeJoy's statement: I don't want to privatize the organization. I want to act like a private organization as we fulfill its mission. What do you think? What do you think? I don't want to privatize the organization. I want to act like a private organization as we fulfill its mission. So a lot of people speak about UPS, FedEx, all these other companies that are making money and People say we're private. We're not a private organization. We're a service. And then I always go back and forth saying, well, we get raises and the raises got to come from somewhere and not just magically appear in the sky because we have to make some money. It just doesn't do this. Other people say Congress should be funding us. So there's a lot of opinions behind it. But my opinion what matters most. You know why? Because it's my channel. It doesn't matter most. But this is my opinion behind it. Um, I think that he believes the USPS can benefit from adopting certain practices and efficiencies associated with private organizations. I may have spoken on this before without actually privatizing the United States Postal Service. Now, the reason being is because UPS is profitable, FedEx is profitable, other organizations that are huge companies that are private, they are set in a manner or structure to be profitable. Um, What I think he means by the statement, efficiency and innovation. He said that before. Um, Private organizations are often known for their focus on efficiency and innovation. Amazon, they, man, they got a robot. I think it's like a five foot 11 or six foot one robot in their warehouse is now crazy. I'm not saying that's coming to us, but it probably is. The joy likely intends to bring these elements into the United States Postal Service to improve its operations. 
This might include streamlining processes, adopting new technologies, and finding ways to deliver mail and packages more effectively. Those are actually some of the words that he said. Um, and so far, before you guys continue, nothing happens overnight. We are going through the, the hard part of this transition and there's going to be tons of hiccups, tons of it. And I expected that a year ago. I said, I'm going to just hold on and go for the ride because it's a ride. Y'all that are sitting down in those standby rooms, this is a ride. Those that went from career to full-time flexible after you were set, you're like, wait a minute, now I gotta be flexible, my shift changes and my hours change. This is a ride. Hold on for the ride because once the dust settles, my opinion, I think things will be normalized. Now, there are gonna be plenty of people that do not hold on for the ride. Seven years in, you're making a decent check, but because you've been disturbed with your normality, you may give up. What happens at that point? They bring brand new blood in that's making a lot less than what you made. That's what manpower hours. <laughs> Financial sustainability. Private organizations are accountable for their financial performance and sustainability. We don't, we can just kind of work and just make it happen. I don't know where this money magically appears. Um, by acting like a private organization, the joy may be referring for the need for the United States Postal Service to improve its financial stability through cost cutting, which he's doing, revenue generating initiatives, which he's doing. He's coming up with these new things that I don't know if I spoke about it. I don't know if I should be. But new technologies where they want to try to start bringing in um, almost like a Kinko's. Does anybody remember Kinko's? Or Staples, um, where we're actually packaging things for them. Um, that's part of what he's looking into. So clerks have different type of work. But again, these are steps that need to be taken. Customer service, which I joke so much about saying that the clerks have poor customer service and don't 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 attack me clerks because I have clerks in my family um and I just know and I and I do I have great friends that are clerks and they just know that you know you guys encounter just so many different um personalities that it's kind of hard to be you know straightforward in the culture behind this whole place y'all get attitudes customer service is not easy so mm. Private organizations prioritize customer satisfaction and service. The joy statement suggests a desire to enhance the United States Postal Service's customer standards, ensuring timely and reliable delivery for everybody. Now, this also goes for the managers or the supervisors at the stations. A lot of the stations, they have to sit on the phone and deal with all the customers that are pissed off and things that are going on in a new neighborhood. So this is going to affect the supervisors as well. I know half you guys don't care about it, but that's part of it as well. Innovation and adaptation. Private organizations often adapt quickly to the market changes and consumer needs. We are outdated. Y'all know we outdated. DeJoy may be emphasizing the importance of the United States Postal Service being able to adapt and innovate in response to the evolving landscape of mail and package delivery. I don't see mail picking up. I do see package delivery picking up. Everybody orders something. You see this shirt, you're like, damn. I And you're on your phone, you can take a screenshot like, and put it in Amazon and say, get me this shirt. And it'll get delivered. Well, all these little things that we have with Timu and all these things, we have to adapt to that because we are ordering everything everything and it's coming through the mail so we have to adapt to that nobody's just mailing regular letters like they used to that's just something we have to accept they're not they're just not i mean i know a lot of people don't even know how to fill out a, a letter these people at the post office that work for the post office that they don't even teach it in school anymore it used to be something they taught 
how to fill out a letter, where to put your name, your address, zip code, and where to put the person's name, address, zip code, where to put the stamp. I've had people come up to me and ask me, and I almost laughed, but I was like, they don't teach this anymore. So there's a lot of people that don't know. Interesting, isn't it? Um, maintaining public service mandate. Despite the private sector comparisons, DeJoy stresses that the United States Postal Service fundamental mission is to serve the American people. That's what he said. Do I believe it? My opinion? <sighs> he says by fulfilling its mission, he acknowledges that the United States Postal Service role as a public service institution that provides vital mail and package delivery services to all communities regardless of profitability now that seems almost counter um almost like an oxymoron because he's saying it doesn't matter if we make money but he wants to make money because we need to make money let's be honest we need to make money we want higher pay rates the carriers deserve higher pay rates the truck drivers deserve higher pay rates and that's all i'm gonna say y'all brother what about the goddamn clerks and mail handlers i'm just speaking from what i think and my opinion don't matter and i told you i got family and both of them listen everybody wants a pay raise and honestly, the mail handlers make the least of all the all of the um, all of the other services. They do definitely deserve a pay raise. But where does the money come from? It has to come from people mailing packages. That's on. At the end of the day, somebody has to mail something in order for us to make money. And if they make money, somebody in the comments is going to be like, "Well, it just goes to management. They got a five percent raise once a year. We get." incremental raises and cost of living adjustments on a consistent basis so let's not worry about what management makes we have it consistently going we have a union that consistently fights well most of us i'm not gonna say nothing about the national association of letter carriers president that hasn't done anything for them yet i'm not gonna talk about that but typically they're there to fight for us for raises and everything else that goes with it, the cost of living adjustments, so on and so forth. And if you look at the last contract for the APWU, people say it wasn't a lot, but it really was. It really was. And then they went and they did the whole fluctuation when it came down to the cost of living. We're never going to really keep up with it. Honestly, it's just not going to happen. Let's be, it's just the day and age of today. If they turned and paid all of us what we believe we deserve, the doors were closed. And then you'd have to go find a job somewhere else that's not even paying close to what we're making. There's a lot of you like, oh yeah, well I can go work at blah, blah, blah. If you could, you would. Let's be real. If you could, you would. So don't say, I'm gonna go work here. If you could, you would. A lot of people that leave and end up coming back because they thought they could make more money other places. Oh yeah, I made a ton of money, but now I don't have no health insurance. I got sick. Oh, I made a ton of money, but now I have no pension. There's people that are impulsive movers. So they will move off the impulse of needing the here and now right now versus looking at the long term benefits. I say, hold on for the ride. Hold on for the ride. This is not just easy for me to say because I'm holding on for the ride because it directly affects me as well because like I said, about two, three weeks ago, my position may have to be moved. They may access me out the building. And if I get accessed out the building, the next closest place to me is about 45 minutes away. Will I go for the ride? Hell yeah, I'm going to. Why? Because I know what my long-term goals are. I do. I know where I want to be in X amount of years. I'm gonna take the ride. I'm gonna do what I need to do. And if I don't like the position, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to apply for another position within the service so that I do not lose my seniority or lose my money. I'm gonna lose my seniority, but I'm not gonna lose my money. And I'm gonna have to just do what needs to be done. That's just where I'm at in life. And once you get to that point in life where you're at the point where you know what? I have long-term goals. I'm gonna make this work for me, then all of this stuff that I'm talking about won't even affect you. It'll, it'll, it'll rock the boat a little bit. You may get a little seasick, but you're not gonna jump overboard. 
<laughs> like my analogies. I just be making stuff up off the top of the head. Yes, I'm sitting here in my underwear. I just realized you can see that. My bad. But I'm, I'm at home, comfortable, comfortable. Please, if you made it to the end of the video, do me a favor. Watch the other video for Christine with the breast cancer. She is one of your own fellow postal workers. It hit home for me. I just want you to watch it. Let me know if there's any, just watch the video, please. All right. Um, like I said, I don't ask y'all for nothing. Um, but this one, I, I'm, I, I want you to watch the video, all right? This is J.H. Let me know what you think about my opinion. But opinions are like assholes. Everybody got them, right? Y'all have a good rest of your day, all right? Charlie, hit it. Unexpected expenses stressing you out? Get the money you need now with Loans for Feds, a program designed specifically for federal employees. Bad credit is not a problem. Application is fast and easy with same-day approvals. Apply now.